What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to Weekly Indie Newcomer, the weekend series where we take a look at an indie game that's been bouncing around my brain over the course of the last week or so. This week we're going to be taking a look at Escape Sierra Leone, which is like a survival game mixed with like a super hardcore shooter. It's a little bit of an interesting game. People that were into like Daisy and stuff and like I guess military simulators and things of that nature might like this one a little bit better than some of the other lighter hearted survival games but at the same time this is a first impressions video I've actually never played this game before I've just watched a couple like they sent over some trailers I looked at the trailers and I watched and I said to myself yeah I'll check that out on the channel this weekend so welcome to the first gameplay impressions of Escape Sierra Leone here at Weekly Indie Newcomer I suppose we should get started because you only get like 30 minutes of me playing the game so I might as well make it as condensed and interesting as possible let's see what you can expect if you decide to pick this game up for yourself later on. Uh, let's play pacifist setting. No, we don't do that. Normal mode is for experienced players who want to play the game as it was envisioned. The AI is unforgiving. There are more enemy units and you need more food and water to stay alive. Well, shit, let's do normal mode. I mean, I don't want to punk out in my first impressions and make myself look to- oh my god, that lens flare. I'm blind! My eyeballs! They've been sawed in half by the mighty power of photons. What is that? Can I pick that up? Thank you for playing and helping with the development project. Okay, that's fine. That's cool. Don't need to know about that right now. So it appears as though, man, pretty game. No lie. This game kind of jumps out at you, don't it? That's the first thing that really, really gets you is kind of the graphical representation. is like, pow! It's up on screen just like making itself known the second you start. Well, I don't really see anything around. I will consider maybe going off in this direction. In addition, I'm going to start testing keys because I have no idea what does what. Oh, look at that. I've got a frame rate monitor. Ah, there it is. H opens up my inventory, apparently. So I've got raw meat, and I've got a, botter I've got a bottle of dirty water. Okay. Well, then that was the H key right there that allowed me to pull that open. You need a map in your inventory to view a map. Okay. I'm just pushing keys right now as I'm walking around. Beautiful rock formations. Greetings. Will you help me survive? Are you on my side, or are you on the side of nature? I'm going to assume you're on the side of nature, dicks. Uh, was there anything down that way on the beach? Basically, all I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to get a bearing for where I'm at. Doesn't look like there's anything that way. Is there anything in the water? Like, can I go in the water? Let's find out. This is a first impressions video, after all. We should probably do some of this important exploration. Water, water, can I hang out in you? No. Oh, shit, son. There's, like, stuff underwater. Do I stay on the surface, though, or do I sink? It looks like I stay on the surface a little bit. But it does look like there's stuff underneath the water, so maybe swimming is planned at some point. Oh, my good lord. Don't jump in the water. If you jump in the water, you get a little bit of weirdness. There we... I don't know why my hand is coming up like that whenever I jump. I assume it's like when my cat throws up. Like, his little arm is like... And it curls up next to the side of his ear whenever he, like, hacks up a hairball. I assume it's involuntary. It's not our fault. So, like, how do I go down into the water? It seems like the water's a little confused right now. So, you know what? Let's just chalk the water up as a loss for right now. That appears to be something that's maybe a work in progress. That's fine. Whatever. It could be a work in progress. I haven't planned on going into, like, the unknown ocean anyways. It looks pretty, if nothing else. Did a pretty good job making it look gorgeous. It might not be functional, but damn, is it a looker. It's like me. <laughs> you gotta sneak in opportunities to promote yourself whenever you can. Let's head off down the beach and see if maybe there's something around. I don't know if these trees right here will give us access to, like... So let's say that I run around a little bit. I do have a stamina meter. I would like for some of this information to be on screen, and I do think that the UI is a little underwhelming for right now. Like, things like you can see, like, the Photoshop marks and stuff along the side. Just a little presentational stuff like that. I'm trying to bring my impressions game up in future episodes. I, I kind of feel like I've been stagnating as an impressions giver, and so I've been trying to focus on things, maybe be a little bit better about... Oh, we got footprints, though. That's pretty dope. I actually didn't even notice that footprints were being left. Although they were being left before we went into the water. If they were being left after we went into the water, they should be like those dark ones like we have right now should be from after, right? I don't know anything about anything, though. Let's be on our way. Yeah, I'm trying to be a little bit better at my job, but I think the uh, representation of the UI needs a tiny bit of work. It's functional. I mean... What the hell is that noise? Did you hear that? There's something. Something was like, chunk, 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 over here. 
Obviously, I'm going to go and see what it is because I feel like getting my ass chewed off by a Wolverine right now. Woke up this morning and said, yep, what life experience would I like to add to my overall docket slash catalog of things that I have personally experienced? And I said, uh, how about getting a gluteus chewed off by a Wolverine? That sounds pretty good. That sounds like something I could go for. Sounds like a thing that I could get in line for. Maybe uh, get excited about it. Possibly even pay for. Possibly even pay for. And like that, the sounds of the ocean vanished. We were in the jungle. The darkness encroaching on every side. The leaves grasping at my flesh as I pressed my way through the brush. Look, that tree's got little dreads. It's a dread tree. It's a dread-headed tree. Well, none of these trees appear to provide sustenance or anything like that. I do feel like I'm going kind of uphill, so I guess I'll keep doing that until I've got an overall lay of the land. And then from there, we'll try to find any kind of landmark or... <gasps> exactly, what is that? Here, I'm going to drop low and crouch using the control key here. This building is most assuredly on fire. Who set it on fire is the question. Was this like an accidental, like, hey, I'm cooking dinner. Oh, shit, I dropped the spaghetti fire. Or is this like a malicious, ha, 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 you failed to vote for the right dictator. Therefore, I throw a Molotov on your house. If it was the latter, I feel like we should be a lot more careful. But, you know, we just spawned, so I don't give a shit. Let's go. We just spawned. I haven't achieved anything yet. This is kind of like at the beginning of Daisy when you first start. You're like, I don't care if I die. I'm going to take big risks and hopefully get big rewards. Oh, shit, there's a dead lady over here. Oh! <gasps> Does she have a diamond? She do. She had a diamond. Where's the diamond? So is the diamond inside my inventory now? Like, what was that? Oh, yeah, there it is right there. What do I use the diamond for? I assume as, like, a blood currency. This lady got blapped in half, though. Sorry, lady. I don't think home insurance is going to cover this incident. Ooh, what is this over here? Looks like we've got... Some kind of, like, Coca-Cola. We can pick things up with the F key. We've also got some kind of bread right there. And we've also got a bottle of water. I will take them. And also, I will point at them with my finger and say, Yes, that is a bottle of water. Yes, indeed. Bottle of water. I have looked upon you and found you to be pleasing. Therefore, you should be added to the interior of my inventory. Jump up here because this place... Ooh, we got another dead body in here, too. Do you have a... <gasps> ooh, this one's got a 1911. Shit, yeah. Okay, what is this over here? Is that bleach? What is that? I suppose maybe I could do some chemistry or something. Like combine the bleach with, I don't know, ammonia? Make some nerve gas or something to kill some fools? How many bullets does she have? That's my other question. So we've got a battery. So what do we have going on here? So that is a set of matches in a waterproof tin. That's motor oil. It's used to craft various items or clean firearms with. There's a loaf of bread. It's not particularly appealing to look at, but it provides... A large amount of calories. It's also rather cheap to produce at markets. Yeah, sounds good to me. A D-cell battery. We are we all know my feelings about D-cell batteries. We've got clean water on this side. We've also got a bottle of cola. I'm gonna drink the cola. It raised my hydration a little bit. Oh, I was hoping I get a little bit of calories from it too, but I guess not. Why did the noises <gasps> Ooh. Oh, you hear that? As I'm carrying around gear, the sound of my character moving, I think, changed. Like, now he makes, like, clinky cowboy noises. Yeah, that's kind of a cool effect. I like that. That's immersive. Like, as you pick up more items, you start to make, like, clinky noises as you walk around. That's kind of cool, right? What kind of bullets did we pick up? Those look like they were, like, 7.62s or something. Yeah, 7.62 by 39s. Okay. Uh... I think I'm going to eat that bread because we don't have anything else going on right now. Anyways, it's 1045 in the morning on day one. I'm making clink noise. I feel like I'm walking into town right now. I'm like, where that tavern at? I got to talk to the magistrate. He done double-crossed me like a dirty dog too many times. We need to meet at the center of the town and shoot this thing out. Me and my six-gun will arbitrate justice upon all of you. Maybe I should equip my firearm. So there's my firearm. Looks reasonably decent. Uh, its positioning on the screen is somewhat unstandard for first person shooters, but you know, I'm open minded. We could try something else out new. Normally it's slightly like to the side, you know what I mean? Just to let you know what you're carrying. And frankly, when you're carrying a firearm in your hand like this, you normally aren't looking at the firearm. 
the entire time, unless you're, I guess, unless you're really, really obsessed with that firearm. That firearm, that SIG was everything you were meant to have. It is your partner. I feel like I do a lot of walking through bushes in this game. Do I lose stamina for jumping? Hope not. I don't see any more fires or anything like that. But then again, I would kill for an open field right now. I can't help but feel as though I'm getting poison ivy. I'm definitely getting poison ivy right now. I see no way that I'm not going to end up with sumac or something all over my body. I'm just going to jump the entire time. How about that? It'll probably negatively affect my calories and or my stamina, but I don't give a shit. Our health is a little low, too, which is kind of weird. What does that do? It can be broken down at a workbench into rags, which can be used to clean firearms or craft certain items. Okay, so you can make that into, like, strippies. I guess we crafted a workbench, as indicated by whatever that... I'm going to go this way. I'm going to kick it into sprint mode because we really haven't seen any bad guys or anything just yet. I want to shoot somebody. I got like a real underpinning desire just to blap somebody today. And so that's what we're going to do. Ah. Is that a house? I don't know what that is. It looks like a house maybe. Let's go have a look. Let's see if there's anybody in that domicile over there. Dude, this is like a really, really shit environment. And I don't mean it's beautiful. Like, I would love to be here just not like in a... Shit! Oh my god, who the hell is capping at me? Oh my god. And that's exactly what I was about to say. I was just about to be like, this is a really shit environment to be engaged in conflict. That was exactly what my next sentence was going to be. And then I was going to follow it up with, because you can't see shit. If you're going to get shot, you have no idea where it's going to come from. Like, it's just going to come out of left field, and it's going to cap you, and that's going to be that. Like, it's going to be over. But at the same time, I think that lends kind of attention to the game that didn't exist. I think it makes you feel a little bit nervous. Now, they will have to adjust. Like, I don't know if that guy legitimately saw me, or if that guy was able to see through bushes. Because I have played some games where, for some reason, the AI is able to, like, scan through bushes, and they just don't give a shit. Like, they've got, like, x-ray vision, and they can see through grass and everything else, and it doesn't matter that you're crawling around hiding. I don't know exactly how that would work in this game. I'm not privy to any of the programming. It looks like we always start in the same spot, maybe. This feels kind of familiar. Man, that guy put us down hard. He put us down like a dog with mange. He didn't give a shit. He put us down like a dog that's been sucking all the eggs out of the hen house. Just bat, 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 bat. So, yeah, it looks like we start in the same spot every single time. So that's cool. That means that recovery is nice and easy, and you can kind of figure out what you did long last time so that uh, on your second attempt you could try something a little bit different. Now, do I always get a diamond from right here? I always get a diamond from right here. Okay, we'll pick up the diamond. Maybe I can bribe my way to success here later on. What time is it? It's 7.40 a.m. That would explain why the lighting is a bit piss poor. Poorer than piss. And piss is pretty poor. It's been employed for a while. It's been really having trouble finding employment. Do we get the same items every single time, or do the item spawns change? So there's the magazine right there. I'm guessing that the items stay the same every single time. Okay, a little bit of a downer there, but I'm wondering, that would be one of those questions that I would ask the developer then, is are they planning on further early access to make the items rotate, like DayZ style, where it's randomized, and different locations give you access to different things? Or is this just the starter area? Like, for example, when you start out in an MMO or whatever, you start out in, like, a standardized area. Is there always three bullets in it? There's always three bullets in it. Well, I guess I'll just have to use my 45 ACPs to the best of my ability. I would also consider, I don't know why H is the inventory key. I'd suggest swapping that over to I, although I assume we can probably re-keybind, right? Yeah, we can re-keybind, so it's not that big of a deal. If you wanted to see what the keybinds were, there it is. In fact, I'm going to put that on I right now because I just said change fire mode, seat. I could drop a weapon. Oh, cool, there are like a bunch of like little interactive things in here. We can reload and clear a jam from the breach. Oh, cool, nice. And we got strafing. Yeah, that all makes sense. We'll close that down. Because that is not what this series is all about. But I wanted to give you like a brief look at some of the options you might be able to fiddle around with. If you just I saw I thought my footprints were somebody else's footprints and I got nervous for a second. My footsteps, that is. My footsteps. Alright, well let's grab some of the food then. And this time I'm gonna head off down the beach and see if it's possible that like maybe I'm able to get like a visual mark on the guy who shot me before he's able to do that so we don't have like one of those who shot you moments because I don't like that's an important question to answer that's like one of those things that really really needs to be answered like where is my next paycheck coming from where is my next meal coming from 
Where is somebody riddling me with holes from? See what I mean? These questions all have to do with the fundamental level of survival that we can maintain in our daily lives. And so, it's a question that I think should be legitimately asked. How's our stamina, by the way? Is that holding up? Oh, our stamina is holding up pretty well. I'm going to eat my bread again because my calorie count looks to be a little bit low. My mental state. I wonder how that affects things. Like, do you get all PTSD'd out or, like, how does that happen? Like, do you get all, I guess you maybe as your mental state deteriorates, maybe you get shakier. And you get, like, more and more random effects as you try to fight or whatever. Let's take a look here. So there's the house right there. I don't have a scope or, like, an ACOG or, like, anything else. But I feel like he was shooting me from behind. Like, I feel like he was in the brush somewhere. Because when I ran to the house, I was expecting to see him there. And then he wasn't there. And it looked like the gunshots were coming from behind once I did that. So let's maybe approach with a little bit of brush covering us. Because this is a super lethal game. Keep that in mind. This is a game where you can die very, very easily, as you just saw. And it, frankly, it took more gunshots than I figured it would take. It took more gunshots than it takes in DayZ. That's for sure, unless you're pelting somebody with like a Makarov or like a 380 ACP or something. Let's listen for a moment, although the ocean is really sabotaging my efforts to listen. Damn you, ocean. Why do you want me to be dead so badly? Be like, Poseidon wills it! <laughs> like, well, if Poseidon wills it, I guess. This is pretty intense. I like this. And the stakes are high, too, because... This place could have dope-ass loot. That guy was shooting us with like a shotgun or something, so chances are... Oh my god. What the shit just happened to the sky? Huh, even the rain effects are kind of pretty, except for the water hitting the ground. But everything else looks good. I don't mind it. So where's this dude at? I wonder if the rain messes with his ability to hear me too. This is a little too intense for me. I'm a little nervous about the way this is going to play out. Where is this dude hiding at? There'd be no way to tell. There's so many bushes and shit. I guess I'll just watch for movement. That's what I used to do when I played DayZ. Is you would just camp a location and wait to see movement. He's not up in a tree, is he? I was going to say, if he's hiding up in a tree, I never would have guessed. Thought I heard a footstep for a second. Like in the grass or whatever. But it's gone now. There's like so many noises that is making it very, very difficult to track. There could be somebody right behind me and I never know it. He said as he looked behind himself in a panic. Well, ain't no time like the present. Might as well move forward. Is that a dude standing right there? I can't tell. Yeah, there's a dude standing right there. So let's stay low for right now. I don't know if he's seen us. But I'm going to need a hell of a good shot to make this work. And I think he's got us outgunned. I'd rather do it while he's facing away from me. Definitely not going to move for right now, though. I'm just going to stay in the bushes. And we're going to wait. Because right now he's in a position to return fire. And I don't want to take return fire. I want my first couple shots to maybe drop him. If I can get a little bit closer to guarantee that hit, that's what I would rather do. The, per the perspective changes a little oddly. It's like it pulls your viewpoint down to where the gun is at when you do that. You see that right there? That's a little odd. I would rather have the gun raised up in an animation to the eye to make it a little bit. I don't know if he's actually going to move. I think he might just chill right there. wonder if I got the bullets to kill his ass. 
Like right there is where I would put the first shot maybe. Like a little high because he's a little bit deeper. I don't know if the game has like common trajectories on bullets either. That's the other part is we're doing some serious experimentation right now. Oh, we got him. He's down. Holy shit, this game is hyper lethal. Oh my god, I wasn't expect. Oh, he's back up. So what's he going to do? He's probably none too happy about getting shot. Will he bleed out and die if I just let him? I bet he will. This seems to be that sort of game. I think that's it for him. We got him. So he came back out to investigate. He should be down. Although I'm gonna keep a, I'm gonna keep a, I'm gonna keep a close watch on him just to make sure. Looks like he's down though. He's got a shotgun over here. How many rounds he got for the shotgun? Because I know he didn't buck off any rounds, so we should have a couple in here. How do you check uh, your equipment? Let me let me take a look at the key bindings real fast. How do I check my? So if I unload it, that's gonna be you. Aim down sights. Is there a way for me to thumb mouse button rifle whip? Oh, you can pistol whip somebody. Okay, so that's cool. My my question is, I wanted to be able to check the chamber basically and see how many bullets I have, how many rounds I got going on holster, draw weapon, mouse wheel up, mouse wheel down. Okay. Oh, that does appear to. Oh, he's got eight rounds. Holy shit. Okay, so he's got a whole bunch. Is it possible that I take the pistol with me too? Because I would like to have both. I think it's a wise idea. I think the pistol only have like one bullet left. But that being said, I mean, having extra firearms is never a bad idea. Close that down. I don't think he's got anything else going on. This is an ammo box right here. What's he got going on? What's he got in the ammo box? This area could be patrolled by other people. And if it is, those gunshots are definitely going to bring them crawling on in here. Uh, we've got a Band-Aid. A watermelon. We've got, I'm allergic to watermelon, so I can't have it. I can't have it. It's, it makes me get all itchy. Your backpack is full. I... Band-Aids don't stack, huh? Alright. We've got dirty water. Use that. And then drop it. And then as far as the watermelon goes, we'll grab that. And I'm just going to eat it right now. Because calories and hydration, why not? I'm allergic to watermelon, though. Can't have it. Can't have it in real life. I get all swollen, and it's unpleasant. I love watermelon, too. That's what's a son of a bitch about it. Backpack is full. So we've got a 1911 magazine that is currently empty. An empty 1911. Holds seven rounds. Use it with loose 45 ammunition in your inventory to refill it. Okay. All right. Is there any loose 45 around here? That's probably just motor oil. Oh, what is this over here? Another shotgun. Another shotgun. So what I would recommend is that we drop this. And at the bare minimum... What was that right there? What did I just pick up? Ah, an empty magazine. Is there one that actually has, like, rounds in it? Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this... So we have the two different shotguns. And what I want to do is I want to unload this thing. So how do I unload it? Let me see the key buttons again real fast. To unload a weapon, it's U. Okay. And so I've now unloaded the shotgun cartridges. And then I unload this one as well. He's nodding in approval. He really, really likes this idea. He's like, yeah, man, I'm down with that. That's cool. Unload that gun that you just took from me forcibly by shooting me in the face without trying to verify if I'm a good guy or not. I know you're not a good guy because this is the shotgun that you shot me with. The You shot me in the ass with this shotgun the last time. So I can ditch a gun like so. That leaves me with this gun right here. So we'll pull that out. 
Did I just kick one out of the... Oh, there was one in the chamber. Look at that. And it kicked out the live round, just like in real life. Holy shit. Okay. It's a little unexpected. Definitely wasn't planning for that one. So now we've got access to three more cartridges right there, which sounds absolutely great. I would have loved to find some more 45 ACP, though. So what kind of rounds were these? What did I pick up from this? Why did it drop my shotgun when I picked that up? What is this? Oh. Gotcha. Okay, so I can store items inside the ammo case. And then the ammo case is what I'm carrying like in my offhand, I think, maybe? Let's find out. Alright, so we've done that. Yeah. Okay, so you can carry an ammo case with you. So you could actually put an ammo case somewhere as like a preemptive to uh Can I put the ammo case away? Ah, I can. There we go. So now we've got the ammo case in our opposite hand, so we basically got our own personal storage with us right now. Shotgun. You know, my hand is clipping through the gun right now. Definitely, I think this is a one-man project, but I think some of the animations and things could use some work. At the same time, though, as we're coming towards the end of our journey with our first impressions of this game, I'm actually kind of impressed. I expected a lot less from this game, just because survival games are like a dime a dozen right now. And while this game does have its flaws, it's being worked on by, like, one guy, and the combat feels visceral. We've only been involved in that one shootout, but it feels real. Like, one bullet is enough to put somebody on the ground. You know, in a heartbeat. And what's even better is they can do the exact same thing to you. Like, they have no problem flattening you as well. And so you've got to be very, very careful as you're working your way through this environment. It gives you kind of a... It's set in Sierra Leone, so it gives you like a very, very almost Vietnam type feel where you're moving through the jungle, you're constantly panning and scanning and trying to make sure that nobody's got the jump on you. Because in this environment, that's going to wind up with you dead. You know, if, if you wanted to, I would suggest that if so far it hasn't grabbed you just yet, my suggestion would be to wait until it gets a few more early access updates. That would be my suggestion. Just kind of keep an eye on this one, though. The point of Weekly Indie Newcomer, the reason why I do this show, is to promote smaller indie games that get almost no attention from the bigger channels and to play around with stuff that I found to be interesting and give my first impressions of them. And so I think what they're playing around with right here is definitely something that hasn't been done, a survival game that is single-player, in a hyper-realistic, almost Arma environment. Uh, I hope he can pull it off. I really, really sincerely hope that he's able to. If you like what I do here on the channel, if you liked Weekly Any Newcomer when you are stopping by to take a look and see if this game was for you, consider checking out the Patreon. It's the best way to support and make sure that Weekly Any Newcomer continues to be a thing. On top of that, you get access to a Discord where you can talk to me. I give away game keys on there all the time. And then you get, you know, they unlocked a new show this week where I'm going to be doing Splattercat Classic, where I play classic games on the weekends along with Weekly Any Newcomer. Uh, they unlocked interviews with other YouTubers that I've been trying to do. Uh, very, very cool stuff that they've enabled to happen over the course of the last couple of months. And so that's how you would do it. If you want to get the game for yourself, you can check that out down below. I've always got a linky for you so that you can purchase the game and support the developers if the particular idea jumps out at you as being something that you want to get behind. All right. My name is Splattercat. This is Weekly Indie Newcomer. I assume the game has crafting in it somewhere. We just never quite managed to find it. Oh, my God. There's lock picking. Well, we got to wait and see how this goes. I can't tell. Let's say that I go over to here. I think I heard it. Is there like an order when you lockpick? I don't know. I don't know if there's like an order with the tumblers. That'd be one of those pieces of information that I just don't have. And with the rain coming down, I can't hear anyways. Yeah, I can't hear worth a damn. So that'd be something that maybe I would think about changing around. I guess for the survival aspect, um, yeah, you would have to hear through the rain in order to do this. So I guess it sort of depends what they want to do with the game, but maybe mute the game a tiny bit. Oh, I'm going to steal through the window. Never mind. And just like that, Splattercat was happy. 
I will see you all in the next episode of Weekly Indie Newcomer. I hope you liked this one. It's been a lot of fun so far. I do this every single weekend, and I hope you'll join me for whatever comes out tomorrow. All right? Bye-bye, everybody.